from you. Welcome replay viewers. How are you doing today? Now, if you're not familiar with me, my name is Dina Cataldo and I own Sicilian Tea Company. And Sicilian Tea Company is devoted, I'm devoted, to making your tea experience the best it can be. So I'm gonna talk to you today about tea flavors and aromas and how you can really dig deeper into this whole tasting world. So tea tasting is a lot like wine tasting. There is just a ton of information out there. And I wanna talk to you about some things that I've learned over the years, some things that I've learned from tea connoisseurs, sommeliers, you know, the experts in tea tasting around the world that I've been learning from. And I've created something to share with you to help you do the same. And I'm also going to share with you some information about the 14-day tea tour if you're interested in really experimenting with tea and really learning about what tea has to offer you. So when you show up, say hello. I would love to hear from you. And I'm going to get going here, all right? So let's talk a little bit about tea. Now, as you know, and I hope you have your tea with you because this is going to help you immensely. You'll have like a little sample that you can create right now and, and taste as we go along. Hmm. Okay. So every time we take a sip of tea, the tea covers our mouth. We get a sense of whether or not we enjoy it. Sometimes we even think about what it is that we're tasting. And we don't always do that, right? Like sometimes we are so busy doing other things, thinking about our to-do list, you know, figuring out what, you know, is going on during the day that we don't actually sit and think about what we're tasting. And part of what draws me to tea is the complexity of the flavors in really quality tea that helps draw me back to tea time and again. Like I will, I, I love coffee, coffee's great, but there's something about tea and the different flavors and the world of tea that's available, the different types of tea, the way it's processed, that intrigues me. And it's something that I love learning and I hope you love learning about too. And I create products both free and for sale that hopefully draw you into this experience of tea and creates an environment where you love drinking tea. Because I didn't always know what was out there. I was so stuck in that world of drinking, you know, tea from a tea bag that was tea dust. I didn't know what else was out there. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Um, and so when I started figuring out what was out there, what was available, I became really excited and I not only started blending, but I was then drawn into this whole world of loose leaf tea that I had no clue existed. So my goal today is to introduce you, if you're newer to loose leaf tea, to the complexity of tea, the availability of responsibly sourced tea out there, and that's what I want to bring you is res responsibly sourced tea, and talk to you about how you can really use tea to engage your senses, to create an experience that helps you become more relaxed in your day, uh, even though ca tea is caffeinated, there's something about tea and the way that caffeine is more evenly distributed to you rather than that quick jolt that coffee gives you that it won't overwhelm you. So let's talk about one of the, the guides that I created and something that I created so that you could take a cup of tea, any cup of tea, and just start putting some of these concepts into place, all right? So this is called Tea Flavors and Aromas Breakdown, and I've linked to it below. And really what it's about is going, taking you through the five steps of creating or experiencing tea. So the very first thing that you do, right, is use your six senses. You're going to be taking it in through your nose, the aroma of the tea. You're going to be tasting, slurping the tea. Slurping really does help aerate tea just like it does with wine. So you're going to be able to experience more of the flavors that we're going to be talking about in just a minute. So once you start, you know, experiencing 
the tea through, you know, you're looking at the color of the liquor. Is it amber? Is it more of a greenish yellowish hue? What does it smell like? You know, are you taking in any kind of smells that come off, off the top of your head? Maybe it's smoky, maybe it's grassy, vegetal, something like that. And then when you slurp your tea, you're gonna let the tea flow all over your mouth and you're going to start picking up maybe some different layers of flavors and different things that maybe your nose didn't pick up. Okay, so then when you get into step two, you're going to start narrowing down that first layer. And so if you go into the free guide, I've actually created a wheel where you can start narrowing down what it is you are experiencing in that first layer. So there's different words. So like woodsy or charred, maybe you have some dairy, maybe you've got um, a milk oolong that you're noticing that kind of, that uh, milky dairy kind of, uh, flavors and aromas. Maybe it's something vegetal. Maybe you have a, a genmai cha that has the bright green sencha tea in it. Maybe you're noticing something sweet or even soapy, uh, fruits or minerals or anything like that. Now, these are aromas. These are flavors that you're sensing that are associated with straight up loose leaf tea. This is not even blending your tea. So I talk a lot about tea blending and using different uh, herbs and spices to add flavors to your teas. But these things that I'm describing are particular you do, to loose leaf tea. You don't need to add anything to it. So when I'm talking to you about all of these different flavors like spices that, that you might sense, those aren't necessarily the physical spices that I'm talking about. So if it's something like a, a spicy taste like cinnamon, I'm not talking about adding cinnamon into your tea. I'm talking about already sensing the, the cinnamon-like aspects of the loose leaf tea that you're sipping, all right? And so then once you've figured out that first layer, that first thing that pops to your head, like is it grassy? Is it is it charcoal? What are, what are you sensing that in that first layer? Then you're going to take it one step deeper. So I list out all of the different uh, words that you might associate. So you know when you, you've got that need, that desire to describe something and it's on the tip of your tongue, but you don't know what it is. You, you recognize the flavor, but you are not 100% sure what it is. Well, this chart is meant to help you figure out what that word is. So if you're sensing something like charcoal, for instance, I go through different words that might be able to describe that. Is it ash, barbecue, is it burnt toast, actual charcoal-y taste, a fireplace kind of aspect, smoke, tar, tobacco, some wet charcoal, because there's a difference, right? Like you can sense these things when you're flat, when you're sipping this, these different flavors. And yes, tea can have those charcoal aspects to it. And a lot of times it's like a lapsang souchong, but there are also roasted oolongs. There's all kinds of different teas. And the processing is what creates these different flavors. Because we all know, and maybe you don't know, but Tea comes from the same plant, Camellia sinensis. What really makes the difference in creating these flavors, in drawing them out, is the processes that the leaves go through. And I'll talk about that in the 14-day tea tour because that is something that I talk a lot about when uh, I discuss each of these individual teas. So once you go through step three, and there are several pages of different descriptive words to really touch on what it is you're sensing. And there could be more than one other thing that you're sensing. So for instance, I'm having a, a roasted oolong this morning. And I can really taste the toast, the, it's like a charcoal-y flavor to it, but it's bright. It's not a, it doesn't taste burned, like it, and like a, like I don't like burnt toast. So it doesn't taste burned, but I can tell that it's been roasted and I can have like, there's some woodsy aspects of it. So I can taste 
a little bit of like cherry wood kind of on the side of my mouth. Like you can just kind of like sense some of these different flavors as you sip your tea. So once you start doing this, you'll start to pick up more and more words and be able to describe your experience even more, uh, more completely. I love doing this just kind of as a game. It's more of a, you know, it could be really snobby if you want to make it snobby, you know, like you might, you know, a lot of people think, well, you're drinking tea, so you must be kind of posh. Well, for me, it's more of a game. It's more of a thing to do because it's just fun. Uh, so moving on to step four, what's the next thing that you can do to describe your experience? It's the mouthfeel of the tea. When you are experiencing anything, any kind of food, and this chart goes for food too. So if you're a food connoisseur, these words are going to help you describe your experience when you're eating as well. But when you're eating, you have different mouthfeels too, right? So it would make sense that when you're drinking different things, that you would experience it differently in your mouth too. Maybe one is smooth, bright. Um, it could be... Hmm. Yeah, I can kind of feel, this is this one's kind of smooth. There's a little bit of a, an astringent taste and that astringent uh, mouthfeel would be when your mouth kind of puckers just a little bit. That is going to explain what that astringent mouthfeel is, uh, maybe, or bitter. Uh, it could be brisk or buttery or creamy. You might have a little bit of a, a creamy taste with a milk oolong. Oily, you might get that sense. It really the tea really layers your mouth and you don't, it doesn't leave your mouth quickly or cleanly. You might have a nice silky uh, tea that goes down very smoothly and leaves like a really smooth layer in your mouth. Or it could be really watery. You know, a lot of things can be watery. Sometimes you'll have a cup of coffee and it'll be like, huh, it's a little watery. And the same thing goes for tea. It's like, it could be a little bit watery. So now that you have some of these tools, what you'll be able to do is create a description of your experience and if you are really a fan of tea and you know you have different teas that you try all the time you might want to play with this and actually journal it you can write out what your experience is and then later on you can decide whether or not you want to purchase more of that tea because you'll remember did I enjoy that experience what was that experience could I put my finger on it so for instance you can say thing like things like my green tea has a buttery mouthfeel and I taste vegetal notes of asparagus and bitter arugula. I mean, doesn't that sound fancy? Doesn't that sound pretty? So if you want to play these games, if you want to learn how to talk about tea with people who are really knowledgeable about tea, these are fun things to know. And if you are someone who is just a tea connoisseur, someone who doesn't even want to engage with those people, at least you can have fun with this yourself, right? Like this is just, it's just fun stuff. I love it. So I created a 14 day tea tour because I wanted to be able to create this experience for myself. I wanted to be able to sample different teas and not be so committed to buying one, right? Like you don't want to have to just say, okay, I'm going to try this oolong. And then I've got a month's supply of this oolong that it turns out I don't even like. So you can start discovering what kinds of teas you like. So there's six main types of tea, and you've got white, green, oolong, uh, black, dark tea. I'm missing one in here. My brain's not functioning. Apparently, it's too early in the morning. Someone, I'm sure, can comment on the sixth tea. Um, so it's just a way of uh, being able to describe that experience. Okay, so 14-day tea tour. I've linked to it below if you want to learn more about it. It is just a fun thing to do, all right? I wanted this, and that's why I created it, is so I wasn't so committed to purchasing that one tea, and I could try a bunch of different teas and, and go ahead and figure out what I like. So, for instance, this, this particular tea tour has multiple types of white tea that are going to have different tea aromas and flavors and I walk through tasting notes with you. I give you an online guide so that you can see what I'm tasting and what the makers are tasting. I talk about who the makers are, where these teas are sourced from. Uh, there's again my cha in there. There's green tea. Oh, yellow tea is the sixth tea. There we go. So it's white, yellow, 
green, oolong, black, and dark tea. And there's a difference between black teas and dark teas, and there's a difference between yellow teas and green teas. And oolongs can have like a variance. They could be on the darker side of being an oolong, or they could be on a lighter side of being an oolong. It's all along gradations. And the big thing that makes the difference, the only thing that makes a difference, is how the teas are processed. And so I talk about how each of these 14 different teas are processed, and you can discover all that in an e-guide I've created for you. If you're interested in learning more about the 14-day tea tour, or if you are interested in getting this free guide, go ahead and click one of the links below. I will take you to that, and I love walking you step-by-step -step through your tea experience and help bring more value to your experience, rather than just kind of being lost in the tea world and having absolutely no idea where to start or where to go from where you are, I hope that I can bring you some information that's really valuable to you. If you have any questions, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you're watching this in the replay, I still wanna hear from you. Click like, say hi, let me know that you were here because this keeps me going. This is something that's just fun for me. And the more engaged you are, the more fun it is for me. All right, and the, and the more things that I can bring to you that you actually wanna hear about. All right, thanks so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye for now.